I've been to the dispersals and the bomb dump of former RAF Woodall Spa in the woods of Osler's plantation a few times now. And every time, there is an uncomfortable feeling of being watched, of not being welcome, and even a feeling of being threatened. On one occasion, in another part of the plantation, just a short distance away from the dispersals, Glenn Jolly had one of his sled team huskies react violently to an unseen presence almost as though she was being attacked. The sled came to an abrupt stop, throwing Glenn off balance. One dog, Mika, was on her back on the ground, howling and whining as though something was on her and attacking. Then the other, Blade, stepped in and stood over her, at which point whatever it was retreated, and Blade was staring at a point about eight feet up in the tree, hackles raised and snarling. Eventually Glenn managed to get the sled in order, and they moved off for the van and home. However, that is not all that has been witnessed in this area. Six years ago, during a night training session, and while going down a regular trail, Glenn saw something or someone standing at the edge of the wood, a dark figure, but at the time he presumed that it was just a dog walker standing back, allowing him to pass, and so he never gave it another thought. On another occasion, Glenn informed me that he met up with two other husky trainers and both of them asked him if he'd experienced anything strange about the right hand side of the wood. They told him of a warm spot that on a very cold night you could run into it and then run out of it. Whilst Glenn hasn't experienced this, he noted that his huskies refused to run down a certain part, which was also on the right side of Osler's. Whatever his dogs were sensing absolutely petrified them so much that one of them was crying desperately to get back in the van. He states, they are not normally bothered about anything. In March 2012, on a Friday evening, Glenn had invited a friend to come and run her dogs to see if she liked the wood before applying for a permit. He had not mentioned anything to her about things that had happened there in the past, as he didn't want to put her off. Glenn set off first with his team, and his friend set off a few seconds later to follow him around. On arriving back at the van in the car park, Glenn asked her what she had thought of the area, and asked if she had had a good run. Her reply was that she'd loved it, but who was that man standing watching them? The description was given of a man wearing fawny coloured trousers, perhaps a flying suit, who stood looking at them with a blank look on his face. The location of the sighting was on one of the former dispersals of old RAF Woodall Spa. The evening started with a walk around the paths of Osler's plantation, taking in the locations where phenomena have been reported in the past, and a look around the dispersals, perimeter track, and the bomb stores area. A number of contacts were made. There was the impression of marching Roman legionaries along the path from the car park in, into the plantation. In the area of the dark apparition that Glenn had seen as he exercised his dogs, there was a highwayman, a disreputable chap in a large brim dark hat, who informed me that he'd been caught and hanged in the area. And further around one of the paths, a small troop of English Civil War parliamentary cavalry, replete in buff coat, boots and lobster pot helmet cantered past. 
The most excitement of the evening, however, was caused when I saw a white shape flitting through the trees. Unsure of what I'd seen, we all ventured to the area, looked around, thinking, ghost. But eventually we found it was just a white cow moving around. Bit of a letdown. After our perambulations, Glenn, Sally, Jolly and myself conducted an investigation on the dispersal pan adjacent to the area where the apparition had been seen. Nothing of a physical nature happened in the three or four hours that we were there. No apparitions were observed. There was no stone throwing, although I asked for this to happen, if at all possible. I did receive some strange impressions concerning mosquitoes, the aircraft and not the insect, and aircrew, which proved, with a bit of post-event research, to be correct. I had problems with the recordings from the start. The microphone, an external twin microphone plugged into the side of the mini disc recorder, something I was trying out at the time, sounded as though someone was interfering with it on the left hand side, but not the right. I have tried it subsequently and there is nothing wrong with it. Also in the night, there was the faint sound of an aircraft recorded that wasn't audible to us at the time, or at least we didn't remember one, but memory can be a funny thing. As an end piece to this investigation, I came away from Woodall Spa with a terrible headache. I can only liken it to being hit on the back of the head. The pain was awful and I felt completely nauseated. And no, there was no alcohol involved. This lasted all night. The following day before leaving for County Durham, I went with Glenn to RAF Colby Grange, still with that headache. And as soon as I entered the watch office, the pain vanished, but that is another video on my channel for anyone interested. I still wonder, did I pick up a spirit hitchhiker at Woodall Spa that evening who got off at Colby Grange the next day? It was certainly an interesting, although painful experience. <laughs> 